Previously, we added the profile page so that authenticated users could view their profile information. And on that profile page, we added a field that'll tell the user whether or not their email is verified or not. Now, currently every user does not have a verified email because we aren't sending out email verification emails throughout our application at any point. So what I wanna add is a way for users to send themselves an email verification email so that they can verify their email through Firebase authentication. So currently on the profile page, I'm logged in and we can see my email is not verified. So email verified, no. So ideally what I wanna add is a little link or button over here where if the user clicks it, it'll send them an email verification email. And this button will only be visible if their email is not verified. And it'll say something like send email verification email or maybe just verify email. But regardless, let's move over to the UI. Let's start on the UI side of things. So coming over to our profile view, that's where I wanna add this message or this button. So as we see, we have our text block that shows the email verification status, either yes or no. So next to this, I wanna add that button so that the user can send themselves an email verification email. So in this grid, let's simply just add another column and then to the right of this text that shows the status of their email being verified, let's just add a button. We'll make the content verify email and actually we'll put it in parentheses just to show that it's a little side note here. We'll have to add some margin as well. We'll do 20 to the left and then clicking this button will execute a command. So we'll bind to some kind of send email verification email command which we'll add to our view model in just a bit. I also realized we should put this button in grid column two. So this third column that we just added. And then also we only wanna show this verify email button if the user actually has to verify their email. So if their email is already verified, then we do not need to show this button. So we're gonna conditionally render this using a style. So let's define the button style and define a style in here targeting buttons. And inside the style, we're gonna define a trigger. So let's set triggers. And we're going to use a data trigger and we can bind to this is email verified property that we have on our view model. So let's bind to that is email verified. And if that is true, then we'll set the visibility of this button to be collapsed. So we won't display it if the email is verified. So this style covers the behavior of the button where we only show it if the user's email is not verified, but I also want the button to look somewhat good. So speaking of that, I actually want this button to look similar to our forgot password button on this login page. So it has this blue font and this really signals that it's a button that the user can click to perform an action. So let's do that. So I don't think I moved this styling on the forgot password button into a reusable style as we see here it's just defined in line so let me actually cut this out and move this into a common reusable style so moving into our app.xaml let's move that style in here and then we'll have to give it a key so that we need to reference it and it's not defined as the default style which we wouldn't want so we'll give this a key of button link and we'll go with link because it's blue kind of looks like a link that we can click so let's use that style in our login view on the forgot password button. So we'll set the style to our static resource of button link. And then we'll do the same thing in our profile view, but we still wanna use this style that has our data trigger defined. So we'll just base this style off of our button link style. So reference the button link style as our base style using the based on attribute. So now our button should behave as we want it to. It should show when we want it to, and it should look somewhat decent. So let's run this and see how it looks. And there we go, that looks good. Although I don't think we actually need that much margin. I actually want this to be closer to this value over here. So let's change this instead of 20, let's do five margin to the left. 
and I think that looks good. We'll roll with that. So next up, let's hook up this button to our view model by defining a send email verification email command. So let's head over to our view model and let's define that command. So we want a send email. Let me just copy it from the binding we have on our UI. We want a send email verification email command. And then we'll need to initialize that command in this constructor. But at the moment, we haven't created a command that'll execute this behavior. So over in our commands folder, let's add a new class for this send email verification email command. So this command will actually execute the logic to send the email verification email to the user's email. So we're gonna have to do this asynchronously using Firebase authentication. So let's import and extend this async command base from our MVVM essentials and implement that. So now that we have this command defined, the big question is how are we gonna send the email verification email? So of course we're gonna go through the Firebase auth provider facade that the Firebase authentication.net package provides and that exposes a method to send an email verification email. So as we see on the Firebase auth provider, here's this method to send email verification async, and that'll send out that email so the user can verify their email. But that takes in a Firebase token. So this is the Firebase token for the authenticated user. So we're gonna need that in order to execute this method. So we have the Firebase token stored in our authentication store. So if we look at that, we have this current Firebase auth link. So this includes everything related to our authenticated Firebase user session. And we initialize that when the user logs in. So if we look at this current Firebase auth link, as we can see that has the Firebase token. So ultimately since this Firebase token is stored in the authentication store, and the authentication store is of course related to authentication, I think it makes sense to define the send email verification logic in the authentication store. So what we're gonna do is have another method down here. So it'll be an async method and we'll just make it, I'm actually not sure what the return value will be. We'll see about that, but we'll just call this send email verification email. And it won't need any parameters because the only parameter we really need to do this is the Firebase token, which we have stored within this class. So opening this up, all we have to do is take our Firebase auth provider facade and call the send email verification async method that we were just looking at and then just pass in the authenticated user's Firebase token. So let's grab that and pass it in. So real quick, a couple of edge cases I wanna work around here. So technically this current Firebase auth link could be null. So let's at least account for that. So same kind of thing that we're doing in other places. Let's just null check it. And I think if it is null, then we should just throw an exception. So let's throw an exception. And for the message, we'll just say user is not authenticated. And then lastly, this Firebase token could be expired and we're not accounting for that here. So before we execute this, we should just try to refresh the auth if it needs to be refreshed. So we'll call git fresh auth async, which will do nothing if our Firebase token is not expired, but we'll refresh the auth if our token is expired. So we're ensuring that we're sending a non-expired Firebase token to Firebase authentication. So at this point, we now have the send email verification email logic tucked away in our authentication store. So now moving back over to our send email verification email command, we just need to get the authentication store injected into here and we'll be able to send out that verification email through the authentication store. So let's define a field for the authentication store. So import that and get that injected through the constructor. And all we have to do in this execute method is take the authentication store and send the email verification email using the method that we just implemented. So let's await that since it's async and make this method async. So that'll handle the logic but we should also throw up some message boxes for when it's successful and when we catch errors. So let's do that. So move this into the try and throw up a message box if it was successful. 
So we'll do a message box dot show. And for the message, we'll say successfully sent email verification email. Check your email to verify. And then for the caption, we'll say success. The only action is OK. And we'll make this an information box. And then if we do catch an exception, we'll say failed to send email verification email. Please try again later. Caption will be error. And this time the variation will be an error message box. Whoops, looks like I forgot semicolons there. But now we should be good to go with this command. So let's go ahead and use it in our profile view model. So hook this up to our send email verification email command that our UI binds to. So let's instantiate that command that we just created. So import that. And all this takes in is the authentication store, which we conveniently already pass in through this view model. So now let's test this out. So let's start up the app. And I'm gonna log out because currently this user, of course I don't own test at gmail.com. So I won't be able to verify that email. So let's log out and let me just register a new user with my actual email. So register, there we go. Now let me log in. So log in, there we go. Let's go to our profile. And as we can see, we need to verify our email. So let me click this button to send the email verification email, which was successful, that's great. And I'll move over to check my email. So typically these emails do go to spam. I think we need to configure the email template in the Firebase console. So I'll bring that up in a second, but let's select this. And I think since this is in our spam, we won't be able to click this link. So let's mark it as not spam or not junk and then open it up in our actual inbox. So then we'll be able to click the link. There we go. So then I got this little pop up over here. Your email has been verified. So back in our application, if I leave the profile page and then come back to it, it's still going to mark our email as not verified because nothing told our application to update this state. And our current authentication state has the email verified as no currently. So in order to get this to refresh, we are gonna have to log out and log back in, or we could wait for our Firebase token to expire and then let it get refreshed. And that should update this value as well, I believe. But let's just log out and log back in. So here we go, log back in, go back to the profile page. And this time our email is verified. And since it's verified, we don't see the little button over here to send the email verification email because we don't need that since we're already verified. So it was somewhat of a poor user experience that we had to log out and then log back in in order to pick up this email verification status. But there's a workaround for that. So for one, it is common to not even let users log into your application until they verified their email. So if we enforce that, then the user, of course, would never have to log out because they wouldn't be able to log in until their email was verified. So they could verify their email and then log in and it'd be a pretty straightforward user experience. So that being said, we can send email verification emails when we register a new user. So if we move over to our register command, as we see, we call this create user with email and password async. And the fourth parameter here is whether or not we wanna send a verification email. So the default for that is false, but we could totally set it for true so that we make sure users get that email when they first register. And then we can enforce logic in other places where we wouldn't allow the user to log in until their email is verified. So that might provide a better user experience. I think I am gonna send the verification email when the user registers, but I don't think I'm gonna force the user to have their email verified in order to log in. And the reason for that is because if the user doesn't have a verified email, it's not like we're restricting them from doing anything in our application because in reality, our application doesn't do much. It just queries a message from our API. But say if on our API, we wanted to restrict something to only allow users who have verified their email, then it might make sense to make sure that users verify their email before being allowed to log into the application. So speaking of that, if we wanted to enforce users to have a verified email, then we could do that here because I'm pretty sure this add Firebase authentication setup puts the email verification status into a claim. I actually wanna confirm that. So if we get the claims principle as a parameter here and then put a breakpoint here. So here we go, let's look at 
the claims. So look at the results. And here we go, we have this email verified claim. And of course, that's set to true since we just verified our email. So we could totally enforce this on our API on any endpoint using policies, which would be nice, or maybe even some custom logic in here if we wanted to, that would prevent the user from getting the secret message or doing some other kind of action. So I've thrown a few ideas out here, but basically you can enforce users to have a verified email on your server side by checking the email verified claim, either through authorization policies or some other custom logic in your endpoints. You could also send an email verification email when you register a new user. And then you could also prevent users from logging in if their email has not been verified. But overall, it really depends on your application and how much you want to restrict users who don't have a verified email. And then the last thing I want to bring up before we get into summarizing what we did is that in the Firebase Authentication Console, you can configure the verification email template here. So if you come over to Authentication on the side, move over to Templates, then you can configure everything here. So the sender and then where you're sending the email from. And I think these parameters play a big role in whether or not the email will go to spam or not. So if you have better values or more realistic values in here, then they probably won't get marked as spam. Although I haven't done much research into that, but that would probably be worth playing around with. And then of course you can configure the subject and actual content of your message as well. So consider checking that out if you're building a real application. But just to summarize what we did in our demo application, so on the profile view, we added a button that will appear if the user's email is not verified, and that ultimately sends the email verification email via the Firebase Auth Provider facade provided by the Firebase Authentication.NET package. The user can then verify their email and then log out and log back in to see their updated email verification status. So hopefully you can apply these concepts to your own application to send email verification emails and ultimately enforce users to have a verified email when appropriate. Aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.